Welcome to today's Has Design Quick Tip, where we look back on an animation and bring you a quick tip in under one minute. Enjoy! Today, let's check out post 111. Inside the fluid effects solver, it was set to accurate with the emitter's radius at 50 centimeters. The emission particle radius was at one centimeter. I do want to note that if you're trying to speed up your simulation and you want to use larger particle size, this will definitely give you different results. Inside the fluid data tab, it's obviously set to granular. I don't really worry about the density. The viscosity is at 15.5, the friction's at 12%, stability at 40, and the cohesion's at 20%. I do want to add one thing about the gravity. If I had the gravity enabled the entire time, the particles would start to take form, sort of drip down. I ended up enabling the gravity at frame 180 when I knew it was far enough along to not drop without the pressure of the platform, but also not too far along where it was already off the bottom of the platform. Welcome to today's Has Design Quick Tip, where we look back on an animation and bring you a quick tip in under one minute. Enjoy. Let's check out post 108. Right now, the skull has a vertex map on it with a box field and a shader field. All the box field's doing is subtracting from the back of the skull. I don't want too much gold to drip off the back. You can see that right there. Inside the shader field, let's check it out. I changed the noise to SEMA, the octaves to 2, the global scale to 3000, the relative scale to and the Y at 350%, so it stretches a little more, the low clip at 35%, and the contrast at 50%. Now to get gold to drip from this area, you have to go to your emitter, you have to select the object as the emitter shape, the object is actually the skull, and then the selection is your vertex map. Welcome to today's Has Design Quick Tip, where we look back on an animation and bring you a quick tip in under one minute. Enjoy! So let's jump right in. As you can see here, we have three low poly objects with XP dynamics tags on them. Inside the dynamics tags, we have a radius at 0.1, 0% rigid, 18 on the pressure, push is turned on at strength 100%. The constraints, I do have a structure constraint on. You do want to add an emitter to each one of these balls. It allows for the XP modifiers to be active and move around your dynamics objects. I have a turbulence, two rotators, and a gravity that fluctuates back and forth. I also do suggest putting an XP dynamics tag on lower poly objects so the simulation runs smoother, but then you could just throw a subdivision surface on to round them out. Welcome to today's Has Design Quick Tip, where we look back on an animation and bring you a quick tip in under one minute. Enjoy! Let's jump into 112 to see how these bubbles were created. The goal here is to spawn particles every time a cloth ball collides inside the container. If I pause this here, we can go to the container itself called Arena. The collider tag was set to inside with a 0% bounce, 0% friction. The spawn tab, I ended up adding a spawning emitter based on the collision point, and I wanted to spawn two particles every time it collides. Now over time, I also wanted the particles to decrease their size, and I added that right here with an XP modifier, XP scale. The radius change was negative 0.02. Welcome to today's Has Design Quick Tip, where we look back on an animation and bring you a quick tip in under one minute. Enjoy! So this is actually a pretty simple concept. I have an emitter continuously emitting particles, changing their color based on their speed. I threw a flow field in here, and I have the flow set to a long spline, and the spline is a circle, the strength at 50%. And basically what I'm doing is I'm animating the flow field speed from 0 to 300 over the course of 200 frames. And as the flow field speeds up, the particles start to spread out more. And then at frame 201, I stop the flow field. I disenable it. And then you can see the colors start to change as they push out because their speed's now set to 0. And then I set and explode modifier at frame 270 to have them explode out. Welcome to today's Has Design Quick Tip, where we look back on an animation and bring you a quick tip in under one minute. Enjoy! In this scene right here, we have three cubes rotating. 
They will be our source for our explosion. Under the explosion settings, the gravity is inverted, the heat buoyancy is at 50, the vorticity is at 5%, the vorticity radius at 17, and the viscosity is set to 15. Under the explosion source, the pressure is set to 25, and then the explosion collider pressure is set to 2. Welcome to today's Hass Design Quick Tip, where we look back on an animation and bring you a quick tip in under one minute. Enjoy! So I ended up making a separate piece of geometry just for the cloth. I put a point selection tag on the outside of the geometry for where we want it to be pinned. If I was more patient, I would actually pin it closer to the seams. The vertex map has a shader field on it with a noise. The noise set to turbulence. Global scales at 191, relative scales up in the Y at 2000, low clip at 29, high clip at 87, brightness at 2, contrast at 86. Under the tearing tab in the XP cloth tag, tearing strength set to 1.1, stretch break count at 2, vertex map set to where we want it to tear. And then I have a flow, two flow fields, uh, a random velocity and a directional velocity where we want it to blow off. Welcome to today's Hass Design Quick Tip, where we look back on an animation and bring you a quick tip in under one minute. Enjoy! So I have a formula effector affecting the top of every mushroom. This was just used for the texture called top. I have a smoke emitter from just the bottom of the mushroom. And then I have a collider for the top. Let's check out the VDB volume. The density set to 150, volume step at 0.01. Both absorption and scattering have like a light purplish hue. The texture emission set to 0.1. And the volume gradient has a max value at 1.5 with the gradient looking like this. The explosia, sim speed set to 50, viscosity at 5, dissipation at 0.03. Welcome to today's Hass Design Quick Tip, where we look back on an animation and bring you a Quick Tip in under one minute. Enjoy! I turned the whole watermelon into a Veroni fracture with a torus field. The torus field is going to decrease its radius when I'm ready for it to look like it's smashing. I turned that whole watermelon into a Lembic. The Lembic allows me to put an XP collider on certain pieces of geometry so I would put the collider on the outside faces and I would have the liquid in the inside so when the liquid spreads outward, it's affected by the XP colliders. The watermelon liquid has a emitter shape of a cylinder, radius at 175, height at 10, mitting out of the ring only, birth rate at 7000, speed at 125, radius at 3. Fluid effect solver set to fast, exit pressure 50%, and then the sheeter has an angle at 28 degrees and a max hole size at 18. 